Hello. Hi. It's me, Joan. Welcome to another edition of Reading with Joan. I am your host, Joan, and I love reading books. And I love reading intercontinental books. Books that are going to bring children back to the memories of their heritage. Right here in Scotland. If you want me, join me. If you want to join me every Tuesday and Thursday, 4 p.m. And on Saturday on our Facebook page, later on on YouTube, where we'll discuss about different topics that relate to us. I hope you enjoyed today's reading and I hope you have fun as you read with us every time on this program. Remember to like, comment and subscribe to our channel. Most importantly, tell somebody else about us. Hope to see you soon. It's me, Joan. Bye. Thank you. Oh. oh, hello. Today I'm reading about Ron Hendley. Ron was born in Kingston, Jamaica in 1939. He immigrated from Jamaica to Birmingham with his parents in 1952. Ron is known for his simple but effective ideas. In 1985, he invented a cleaner diesel engine emission system he called the EcoCharger. The EcoCharger improves the performance of diesel cars by reducing smoke emission and fuel consumption and allowing cars to run for 150,000 miles without major maintenance. Ron's innovation succeeds where others fail. Ron explains, it works on the fuel before combustion, so there is no need for a catalytic converted to clean up the exhaust afterwards. It's like a mini refinery under the car bonnet. Ron set up a company in Birmingham that con currently manufactures the EcoCharger. In 1998, it reported in National UK newspaper that Ron had, had, they had a meeting with representatives of a major automobile company I was offered six million pounds for this eco charger. Wow! Ron declined the offer and chose to market and sell the eco charger through his own company. He received support from many people including his friends. X West Indies, cricket captain Clive Lloyd an ex-footballer, Clive Regis. The EcoCharger improved our environment and allowed us all to breathe cleaner air. Ron Hefley is not just an innovator slash inventor. He has several patents to his name. He also comes from a rich background of great cricket players. From 1958, to 1974, he played cricket for Warwickshire and internationally for the West Indies in 1973. His father, George Hendley, also played for the West Indies and Ron Henley's son, Dean Hendley, played international cricket for England during the 1990s. Summary, Ron Hadley is one of those people who can't be compartmentalized. He has shown throughout this throughout his life. As a man coming of long, from a long legacy of cricketers, Ron could have had rested on his father's laurels or just followed in his footsteps, which he did, but Ron had even more ambitious plans up his sleeve. He had a audacious teeth to invent a motor engine part that would compete at the highest level in the motor industry. His invention made motor 
engines more efficient and for environmentally friendly which lead to cleaner air. What I learned is that you should just focus on making a change in the world. And he, and he, he created a motor engine which almost every diesel car uses now. Don't even think about allowing yourself to be pressurized in what you don't want to do. This is a picture of Ron Hendley. Thank you for joining us on Reading This Joke. Bye! Hi kids. I hope you enjoyed the session we just completed about our inventors and scientists uh, from the UK that made their contribution, black inventors and scientists. Um, as usual, we have a session where we read stories to you and today's story is pretty long so we might have to do it on the two sessions. So if we don't finish it today, on Thursday we would continue. The title of the story is Spider Flies to the Feast. This book is from the book Why Leopard Hat Spot and we've been re reading a lot of stories about um, spider. Today, spider flies to the feast. Spider and dog were friends. Every day spider would float down river to visit dog. But he always had to walk home. No one could swim upstream against the swift current. Spider loved to play trick on dog. One day he said, I have a new trick. I can go home walking on the ground. Can you do that? Dog scratched his neck with his hind leg. Scratching always helped him think. No, he said, as his leg hits the ground with a trunk. And never you can. Yes, I can, said Spider. I can walk in space. Dog laughed. No one can walk in space, he said. No one except me, said Spider. Prove it, said Dog. Spider climbed on the top of Dog's house. He let out a silky thread so thin that Dog couldn't see it. Then he waved one leg. Let's go, said Dog. We weren't walking through space. Anyone can wave one leg out in space. Spider waved another leg and another and another. He was waiting for the wind. So let go all your legs, said Stoke. The wind came up. It blew the end of a thread towards Spider's house and the thread caught on Spider's roof. Then Spider stepped off Dog's roof onto the tray and began to walk. How do you do that? asked Dog. I never saw anyone walk on space before. He followed Spider all the way to his house. Spider climbed down from the roof and grilled. Do you like my trick? he asked. You were lucky, Spider. You could have crashed and hurt yourself. Tricks can really get you in trouble. So from now on, no more tricks. Dog wiggled his tail goodbye and jumped into the river. He floated, he float, he floated home with the current. The next day, Spider floated downwards to see Dog again. I have a better trick, he said. I can go home without walking on the ground or walking in space. How? Dog asked. On the river, said Spider. Dog scratched behind his left ear, then shook his head. The current is too fast, said Dog. No one can go upstream. I can, said Spider. Prove it, said Dog. Spider took a deep breath and plunged into the river. He sank beneath the surface. The dog boarded to the edge of a river bank to rescue his friend, but stopped short as Spider's head bulged up. 
Watch out, Spider called. He began moving his eight legs at once, very fast, skating on the surface of the water. Gradually, he walked his way upstream. Dog was amazed. He raced up the path and waited for Spider's house. Soon, Spider skated to the bank and climbed out. Do you like my new trick? He asked. How did you do that? Asked the dog. I never saw anyone walk on water before. That's dangerous, Spider. You could have drowned. I told you that tricks can really get you in trouble. No more tricks. Dog jumped in the river and floated downstream. Spider waved his dripping leg and said, Tomorrow I will come visit you without walking on the ground, without walking in space, and without skating on the river. When Dog got to his house and waded out of the river and shook himself dry, then he sat down and scratched his belly. That spider, what will he do next, he wondered. Early the next morning, the spider cooked a huge pumpkin, cut off the lid, scooped out the seed, spiced it up, climbed the side and pulled the lid shut. Soon, dog will get tired of waiting for me, he thought. He will come looking for me. And when he sees this yummy pumpkin, he will carry it back to his house. With me inside, Spider was so excited that he could hardly sit still. Dog waited and waited for Spider. The sun rose high in the sky, but still Spider didn't come. I wonder what happened to Spider, Dog thought. Maybe this time his trick has gotten him in trouble. Maybe it's hot. Dog trotted up the path to look for Spider and he got close to Spider's house. He smelled something delicious. Yum! He thought lunchtime. When he rounded the bed, he saw the pumpkin in the middle of a yard. Yum! He thought. That's enough food for both of us. Spider! He called. Where are you? Spider heard Dog calling him but he didn't answer. I'll wait until Dog gets this pumpkin back to his house. Then I'll answer him. Spider thought. Wouldn't be a surprise. Spider had covered his mouth with his three legs so Dog couldn't hear him laughing. Hmm, thought Dog. I guess I miss Spider. He must, uh, he must be up to one of those tricks. I will take a little taste of a pumpkin to make sure it's ready. He sank his teeth into the pumpkin and bit the spider's leg. Ouch! Yelled the spider. Oh dear! Thought the dog, glancing around. Spider must be hot. I better look for him. But this pumpkin is so good. I just take one more bite before I go. Dog took another bite of a pumpkin and almost beat the spider's leg off completely. Stop biting me, cried Spider. He crawled out of a pumpkin, rubbing his injured leg. What were you doing in there? Asked the dog. Waiting for you to carry me to your house, said Spider. Dog cocked his head to one side. That was your trick? He asked. Yes, Spider said sadly. That was really stupid, said Dog. I could have eaten you up by accident. I told you tricks can get you in trouble. Spider leaped to the river and put his hot leg or his hot leg in the cool water. All right, dog, he said. From now on, no more tricks. For many months, Spider remembered that he had said to dog, of course, he kept thinking of great tricks, but he didn't play them on anyone. Then the dry season came. Day after day, the sun hung high and hot in the sky. Spider swung lazy from one tree, dangling his head, trying to catch a breeze. This was long ago when Spider hadn't have bent legs. Spider saw Eagle, 
stretch her wings and soar and soar high in the sky. It's cool here, Eagle called to the other birds. Come on up, Spider watched at the sky filled with birds. Some scooped in a huge circle and some fleeted in sharp zigzag. The great spirit looked down for her home high above the clouds. She loved watching the birds zoom and glide. I would love to reward you for entertaining me, said. Come to my house for a feast tomorrow. Hmm. The spider is inviting the great spirit to her house for lunch. Kids, don't you think she's going to play another tricks? I think so. Let's find out the next time on Reading with John. Bye. See you.